It split public opinion, but Scottish politicians from all parties passed the Gender Recognition Reform Bill in December. It aimed to simplify and speed up the process for transgender people to change their legally recognised sex. But the UK government claimed the bill overreached beyond Holyrood's powers and would impact UK-wide equality laws. It used a veto for the first time to block the legislation. Then First Minister Nicola Sturgeon accused Westminster of trying to stoke a culture war, promising to challenge the decision in the courts. It's an issue that's divided the SNP, with current First Minister Hamza Youssef, the only SNP leadership contender, wanting to pursue the challenge if the legal advice suggested the case was winnable. His rival, Kate Forbes, who took 48% of SNP member votes, said the Scottish Parliament had a responsibility to fix the controversial bill. But with today's decision, Hamza Youssef is now picking up the mantle of his predecessor as he heads for a confrontation with UK ministers over Holyrood's powers in the courts. Well, earlier I spoke to Scotland's Social Justice Secretary, Shirley Ann Somerville, on the gender reform bill and on reports that a luxury camper van seized by police from the home of Nicola Sturgeon's mother-in-law was reportedly bought to be used as an SNP election battle bus. I began by asking her how confident she is that the Scottish Government will win its legal challenge. Well, clearly uh, the Scottish Government has had legal advice, as it, you would expect before we go into a judicial, judicial review. We're confident of our arguments in this case. And there's an important principle behind this when you have a, a bill that's been passed overwhelmingly by the Scottish Parliament uh, that, that should be able to become law without a veto coming in from the UK government right after that bill has passed. Because the First Minister now, Hamza Youssef, said, didn't he, during the leadership campaign, that he'd only pursue this legal challenge if the legal advice suggested you were going to win. So, simple question, does the legal advice suggest you will win this case? Well, it's now, of course, going to be a matter for the courts. But, of course, uh, with any judicial review, the government will receive uh, legal advice. The UK government uh, will do the same. We are confident in the arguments that we will put forward um, in this case. And I think it's very important that we do no, excuse, have forgive, this judicial me, review. Me, this um, isn't a place we wanted to be in. Forgive me, Cabinet Secretary. I didn't ask you if you had legal advice. I asked you if that legal advice suggested you, you could win this case. Well, we're confident in the arguments that we will put forward on that, and I'm not going to be presumptuous about that as it goes uh, through court. It is now a matter for the court to look at both sides of the argument um, and for the court to take that decision, and we need to respect that process. Uh, but, of course, as we move forward to this step, um, the Scottish Government has given due consideration to the other alternatives to ensure that we didn't well, get into the place of having a judicial review. Unfortunately, the UK Government has left us with no other alternative but to do so. So this isn't a place we wanted to be. But... Apreeti, you've just given me the same answer. You seem to be studiously avoiding the question. It was Hamza Youssef, who is now the First Minister, who said he would only pursue this case if the legal advice told him he had a good chance of winning. So I'm asking you, does the legal advice say that? Can you give me a straight answer, please? Well, of course, in all of these cases, any government, whether it's the Scottish government or the UK government, will have legal advice. We're confident in the arguments we'll take forward. But I think it's very important, as a government, that we respect the process that we are now about to undertake. Do you accept that this is something the Scottish public don't especially want you to do? Well, I accept that there are differing views on the issue of gender recognition. There are different views in my own party um, on this, as indeed in all political parties, and there's different views in the, the public as well. But we have had uh, consultations on this. We've had a nine-month parliamentary process where this has been debated, and the overwhelming majority of MSPs voted for this bill. MSPs from all different parties uh, supported this bill. And yet, Cabinet Secretary, fewer than one in five, according to a recent opinion poll, want you to challenge the UK government in court over this. Well, I appreciate that there are different views on gender recognition and on this issue. But when a parliament has decided upon a bill, then I think it's very important that the Scottish government defends the will of parliament. Because we have a UK government at the moment who at will, will legislate within areas of devolved competence, which used to be something that wasn't supposed to happen under devolution, but happens um, on a very regular basis now. And if we let the, the UK government get away with a veto, having taken no part 
in this parliamentary process, having suggested no amendments either during the parliamentary process or after, if we allow them to take the veto on this, then the question must be where else they would go with, with this type of veto. Finally, do you happen to know if the SNP owns a camper van? I'm obviously not involved in the operational matters of the SNP. That's a matter for the SNP as a political party. And we're determined at the time where the SNP is going through difficult times that the job of government will continue. And that's exactly what myself as a Cabinet Secretary and all my Cabinet colleagues will continue to do. Cabinet Secretary Shirley-Ann Somerville, thank you so much for speaking to us. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.